How's it going, YouTube? Oxy here, and welcome back. So, the day has finally came. Uh, today, I will be reviewing Deadpool vs. Wolverine, the long-awaited sequel, right, to Deadpool 2. And here we are. It finally came out. The only Marvel release this year, which, thankfully, it seems they're finally taking the approach of quality over quantity. And, yeah... And, like, right off the bat, I can say it because I will touch spoilers because I think it does play a big part into, like, talking about the movie in itself. So, of anything I've ever reviewed, this is the one where I have to say, like, please, watch the movie before. Like, this is the biggest one, like, the most, like, like you've been warned. Like, seriously, it's best to go in blind if you can. And even if you were spoiled by something, it's still a great payoff. And seriously, like, it's, yeah, like, it, it's worth it. Like, this movie especially, it's worth it to go see it. But regardless, um, what are my thoughts? I absolutely loved this movie. This is a love letter to not only the Fox universe, which, of course, I'm talking about, uh, like, X-Men, that sort of thing, right? Non-MCU movies, of course, up until, like, 2019, 2020, where Fox was, like, acquired by Disney. The It's a love letter to all those movies that were non-Disney, non-MCU, like, giving closure almost to that chapter of, like, Marvel or, like, that history and to just comic book fans in general. Um... Yeah, seriously, I cannot praise this movie enough. I absolutely loved it. Like, seeing Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine was, like, just, you know, a, a fan's dream. Especially him back in the yellow and blue. Or, sorry, not back, but us finally getting that yellow and blue iconic suit. Like, the mask, everything. It was just, like, like you know, the... Ever since the first X-Men movie came out back in 1999, and now we're in 2024, it's been 25 years since we finally get a live-action, comic-accurate Wolverine. Um, yeah, but seriously, this movie is a lot of fun. Seriously, Ryan Reynolds, like, he really embodies Deadpool. And I, I gotta say... Everyone, I think, was expecting, and truthfully, even myself, that this was going to be um, Deadpool joins the MCU, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And pretty much being like, oh, this is Deadpool going to be cracking jokes, making fun of Disney, which he does. He makes fun of Disney. Um, but, you know, it's going to be like, oh, it'll be scenes of him, like, travel time traveling right because we know he could do that but no it's a simple premise like set with, with the characters where deadpool uh, after the end of deadpool 2 he traveled to the marvel cinematic universe and he tried to join the avengers couldn't get it it's implied that him and vanessa are no longer dating like at some point they broke up I guess Deadpool had this weird, like, he just f wanted to feel like he mattered, you know? And, and of course, he tried to join the Avengers. They turned him down. Um, and so he's, like, looking. And then the TVA get involved, which I know they're, like, they, like, watch over the multiverse or, like, timelines. And we learn through a character named Mr. Paradox um, that the... So, Deadpool is in the Fox universe, right? So, that includes all the X-Men movies, um, like, Logan, right? And so, Logan died, right? I mean, that's spoilers for, you know, you should have seen it at this point. Logan died at the end of that movie, and he was what they call the anchor being. And so, essentially, every universe has, like, the main character. Like, I'm not even joking. Which, I love that, because it's like a meta in of it in it of itself joke of like this whole the like plot of the movie is literally like hey like 
Wolverine or Hugh Jackman specifically is like the only reason people cared about the Fox universe, like the X-Men movies. So let's literally make him like the if guy. So when him, when he dies, it's like your universe slowly like destroys itself. And so Deadpool goes on like a journey to, I guess, find he's like, let me just replace him. And that scene, like, jumping through all these, like, Wolverine variants, again, if you're a comic book fan, you're gonna love it. Like, we see, like, Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, like, missing the hand and, like, the black and red suit. You see, like, the famous Mark Silvestri cover um, of Uncanny X-Men 250. I don't know the exact number, but Wolverine on X... You see a uh, comic book accurate, short King Wolverine, uh, Patch, like uh, Henry Cavill makes a cameo. And it's just, again, you could tell like Shane Levy, uh, Ryan Reynolds, like they love comic books and the, like the references they do is like, again, uh, it works if you're a comic book fan because you get them. You're like, like. I loved it because in my showing, like, the theater, every time there was, like, a reveal, like, like, especially, like, Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, like, even I was like, oh, no way. And, like, you would hear, you'd hear people say, like, oh, like, out loud. And it's just that, like, that's one thing I can give this movie. It has a great, like, like, this definitely gives, like, summer blockbuster, like, a movie you have to see in theaters right like it's like everyone's involved like you know you're surrounded by like like-minded people but besides that um the plot is really it's a buddy movie right so that De Deadpool finds a Wolverine and of course he's like the worst one and the movie is just them they get sent to a place called the void which again meta text textually is like oh all the forgotten Marvel properties that are not MCU. Like, I just love how they incorporated that into the story. Because it's like, it makes sense. And that's where Cassandra Nova, you know, she's like uh, Xavier's sister, right? Uh, she, like, dwells there. Like, she's the ruler, if you will. Like, she's there by choice, almost. Because she's, like, a reject. And, yeah, and, of course... Yes, we see a bunch of X-Men characters. We see the classic Juggernaut, which I was, like, hoping for. Um, Sabretooth, I mean, that's in the trailer, right? Nightcrawler. Like, you see, like, uh, Psylocke. Like, you see these classic characters from, like, again, if you, like, X2. I know Psylocke's from, like, X2. Um, you, you see them. And Deadpool and Wolverine run into... Uh, the actor Chris Evans which is sold to us like oh is it gonna be Captain America and then you know but then it's revealed no it's Chris Evans as Johnny Storm from Fantastic Four the the 05 movie and, that, and again like the theater like erupted and I, I guess for some people that might be a complaint of like oh this is just yet another relies on cameos and stuff like fan service but the way this movie handled it, where the plot is literally, like, about all these rejected characters or forgotten timelines. And it's, like, you know, like, yes, it's fan service, but it's, like, literally characters that they're, you know, essentially don't matter anymore in the MCU. They're not part of it. So, on that aspect, I'm, like, I like how it's tied to the story. Like, there's a plot element as to why we see them and whether it was Johnny Storm or the biggest reveal which is like back to back to back um so X-23 we knew she was back she was in the final trailer but Blade like the thing is Blade is not even Fox I believe it was like I'd have to look it up if it was like Sony or so the fact they got like the rights or were able to do that Blade was the biggest reveal, right? That's the one that the whole theater gasped and was like, no way. Which, of course, looking back at um, Marvel's history, like, cinematic-wise, Blade, now, the, there were, now, of course, you go all the way back. I mean, Marvel did have movies in, like, the 80s. There was, like, a Punisher movie. Canon Films did a Captain America. Like, 
Mark's, uh, there's the Hulk, the, you know, the, the one, uh, where he looks like it's just a guy painted green, right? Like, so Marvel movies existed, but of course, back then, it was all schlock, right? Like, so comic book movies weren't taken seriously. The first, arguably, example of that, Marvel-wise, was Blade. Like, he's kind of the grandfather of the MCU, so having him back was awesome. We get Elektra, which is Elektra, I mean, uh, the movie was terrible, but seeing her again was like, oh man. And then probably the coolest, again, meta one was Gambit, Channing Tatum's Gambit, which if you don't know, for the longest, it was like Fox was like, he was really, um, uh, he was really like um, wanting to play that character. And it just never, it fell through. They were going to have a movie. It never happened. But then we literally see him in this as that. And they even joke about it. He's like, I, I think I was born in the void. Implying that like, oh, the movie was never made. Like, I just always existed here. <laughs> and yeah, like the film is just an adventure. You know, again, it's a buddy cop thing. But the way everything is handled just so well. Again, Hugh knocks it out the park. Like, he is Wolverine through and through. He's the one and only. Like, not even uh, Robert Downey Jr. can say that. There was an Iron Man in the 70s. Uh, so it's like, not even he can say I'm the one and only. But Hugh Jackman, as of now, yes, we know eventually, probably after Secret Wars, if that is going to be a big Marvel reboot. Um, like in the comics, right? Uh, then sure, they'll... I mean, I would just go, like, the X-23 route. She takes up the mantle of Wolverine. Or um, you cast someone else, someone younger, right? But up to now, Hugh Jackman is the one and only Wolverine. So him back, him and Ryan Reynolds' chemistry is just fantastic. They're hilarious. Comedy is subjective, sure. So I can't, you know, you'll either you love it or hate it. Um, I do, I do think Ryan Reynolds gets it, or, like, even if a joke can be tired, um, I think he, he can bring it back, or, like, he knows, like, okay, like, this is, like, a cliche joke, but the way I execute it is, like, you know, uh, it, it pays off. I guess an example I could give is, like, Nice Pool, who is just literally an excuse for Ryan Reynolds to be able to show his face. And, you know, they do, like, okay, like, he's going to die, and they use him as a human shield. And it's like, okay, whatever. But then I love just the, like, over like the overemphasis. He's like, no, like, um, you're going to die, right? We know that. But then he's like, like, you're going to live. But then he's, like, arguing with them. He's like, you got this. And meanwhile, he's getting shot the whole time. Like, the the way it's executed, I think it was done really well. If you want to do negatives and, you know, because no movie is perfect. Uh, I can't say uh, the plot is dependent on, like, your how much you get out of it is definitely how, true, like, hardcore of a comic book fan. Or, again, like, the Fox Universe fan you are. Because if you're seeing this as only ever watching the MCU, you're not going to know who most of them are. The, the movie does a good job of, like, uh, you know, portraying as, like, hey, this care, like, or by the audience's reaction around you. Like, these people, like, oh, like, they're, like, uh, like, an unexpected return. Like, you definitely get that, but it's something that if you weren't a fan that it, of course, that connection isn't there. And again, the comic book fan, like the Wolverine scene, like the variants, really awesome. But, you know, if you've never read them or, you know, you're just like, again, not a Wolverine fan, you're just going to be like, oh, they're just variants. Like you'll probably just think they made them up for the movie. But specifically, like, again, the, the Mark Silvestri cover, like, you know, that you see it and then like, it's like, oh, because you, like, you know where it's from. Or Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, which he looked awesome when he's big. And like, you know, like the suit, like, again, it only works or it, it's enhanced if you know the, like, the backstory, the context, right? And again, 
if you took someone like who you know is like not a marvel fan that just came to see this movie it would be chaotic like again the plot is just like okay so they're trying to set deadpool wants to save his universe right because they're dying so he's gonna lose everyone he's ever cared for he's loved and he searches for a wolverine because again logan is like the anchor being and you, you know in the end i think it's obvious to say i mean i've already touched on spoilers um you know cassandra nova like we don't get much of her but i will say emma corin like the actress she does a fantastic job like with what like little she had to work with though i really liked her i love to see cassandra come back even though i think she's dead because she pretty much gets like ripped apart because of this time ripper machine that the tva or the mr paradox character is using to like destroy the like the specifically the fox universe but then cassandra's like i'm gonna destroy everything like the multiverse and deadpool and wolverine of course like stop her i mean they both have healing factors so they're hard to kill or you know really and you know the day is saved and Again, everyone was expecting this to be Deadpool joins the MCU, but it's not. Like, that's why, you know, I always, like I mentioned, the Fox universe. This film really is a love letter because it's like, it's almost like telling us as the audience, like, hey, these films happen and, you know, they mattered. A lot of people cared for them because it's like, will we see Deadpool in the Avengers? Probably, right? Um, but I like that he chose his universe like he's like no like i'm doing this for vanessa or for like my family right the photo like colossus uh peter um negasonic teenage warhead like he's doing it for like his crew blind out right and it's touching that in the end like uh it's unclear what happens to like blade electra and gambit i'm assuming they die but um uh you do it deadpool asks the tva agent um he's like i have some you know like friends that i'd like to be taken care of and it's implied like they're they'll be okay right it gives closure to those characters like you know she tells him like i'll see what i can do or it kind of yeah yeah but in a way obviously like oh like i got it like i'll take care of them and Deadpool remains in the Fox universe, right? Like in, it's like Earth, they say like 10,000 something. I think it's 10,105. Um, yeah, but Wolverine and X-23, uh, like this Wolverine is just allowed to stay there. Like you can replace the anchor being. Um, yeah, so they're like, they're happy will again the film's doing really well so will they get pulled into uh the mcu proper yeah i mean this film is adjacent because deadpool has traveled between the timelines and it's like known again he brought this wolverine like from his to like you know, you know he pulled him out so these characters are aware that there is a multiverse so we likely will see it probably towards secret wars though it would be cool to see them get pulled out but yeah this film is a love letter like look if i'm honest with you and i i, I will give the caveat that this is like my thoughts right so this is something that again i'm a comic book fan i love the x-men movies so i got every reference everything to me genuinely this film is a 10 out of 10 like seriously it was just so well like i it's a breath of fresh air being the marble fatigue i was having um i loved it but i definitely you know admit that the the film may not won't reach those highs with everybody right like if you're again you weren't a fan of the uh x-men movies or you you don't read comics which is completely okay the film is still enjoyable it's still a fun ride seeing the banter between deadpool and wolverine um yeah you know 
there I could say the film is probably like closer to like an 8 out of 10. You know, I still think it did everything really well. Like that opening, the end sync, bye bye bye, that you've probably seen memed. Uh, one of the best openings of film ever. As he's using like Logan, like that, uh, you know, the Logan, the Wolverine from that movie, his corpse, like he's dead. I do, I did appreciate that, that they're like, we're not, um, like, ruining that ending right like no like that sacrifice that wolverine did still mattered like you know like x-23 and the others like the other new mutants right were able to escape um but that opening is just phenomenal so i will say as a fan this is like a 10 out of 10 i loved it i do i just want more of deadpool and wolverine but i wouldn't be mad if this is like the end because, again, this film was, like, just a big send-off to, like, the pre-MCU movies. So, um, I know we'll see them again. But if this is, like, the final Deadpool movie, um, which I feel like there's going to be more. Especially with how successful. I'd even go as far as to say this film will likely cross a billion dollars. Maybe even dethroning Joker. Um, well, I know the sequel's coming, so who knows. But at least passing the first one as the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. I do think this film will hit a billion or even do that. I mean, we'll see. I mean, again, it just came out like not even a week. Yeah, less than a week ago. And it's already made almost half a million dollars. So it's definitely going to do crazy numbers. But go see it. It's so much fun. I really enjoyed it. And it's it's a comedy film through and through but i think done really well like the comedy worked for me um again like the comic stuff like the way everything was just tied into it like like the like the reason we have wolverine back is like it's a variant and like seeing all these forgotten or lost characters and it's like giving them like redemption or their time to shine and through and through as like Deadpool 1 and 2 where Deadpool says this is like a love story or this is like a movie about family togetherness it still is very much where Deadpool literally was going to sacrifice himself for his universe right for uh again his family X-Force whatever you want to call them <laughs> right and in the end he stayed with them which I really like that I like that he wasn't just I'm going to, like, this, like, they, they do make that joke where, like, he, that whole head bust the camera, like, I'm going to Disneyland. But in the end, he stayed in the Fox universe. Again, he can travel. He, he's done it. So he'll, he will get pulled out. Hope, I would hope all, like, Colossus, I hope all of them would too. We'll see. Of course, this movie just came out. We'll see what happens, but I cannot praise it enough i absolutely loved it genuinely a like a great theater experience but yeah guys uh thank you for joining me again i'm very passionate about it i i love uh x-men i love wolverine deadpool so this was just like what i needed like seriously probably my favorite film of the year the year's not over but i really loved it and i'm confident you will too but yeah, guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And <laughs> yeah, please like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good jazz. And as always, everyone, I've been your host, Oxy. Take care, and I'll see you next time.